Hello, Dr. Darnese here. Welcome into another episode. I'm on today talking about an example of another one of our diversities. You know, all black people are not Christian. We are not a monolith. And as y'all know, uh, recently Tina Turner died and probably you knew that Tina Turner was a Buddhist. Um, likewise, Herbie Hancock is a Buddhist. And that's one of the things that we talk about Black people and religion, especially Black Americans and religion. We don't often talk about the real diversities of African and African American religious diversities. Mostly we think of Black people as being Christian. And even within Christianity, we talk about Black people being Baptist, Methodist, or Pentecostal. Even when people are black and Catholic, you know, people be like, oh, really? You're Catholic or, you know, a black Lutheran. Oh my gosh, how come you're a Lutheran? Well, because we're diverse, right? We are not a monolith. Anyway, I just wanted to come on here real quick and give us a little bit about Buddhism today. As you can see, I am not in my usual space because I'm on the road. I think I said on here, I am relocating from um, LA to Savannah, Georgia. And so I am basically... <laughs> waiting for my stuff to show up. So um, I'm a little out of place, but I've been meaning to come on here and talk about uh, Tina Turner and her faith and give y'all a little nugget about what Buddhism is. I've been meaning to do that really since she passed. So anyway, I'm wondering, uh, what do y'all even know about Buddhism? If you know anything at all about Buddhism, people will have these misconceptions that uh, people worship Buddha as a god, and that is not the case. Um, the Buddha is an enlightened being, it is one who came to be enlightened, right? Who modeled a path for enlightenment. So Christians think of Jesus the Christ as one who was enlightened, one who was anointed. Christianity takes it further and says that Jesus is your savior and you have to believe in him in order to be saved. Well, the Buddhists say everybody has to work out their own salvation, right? And so Buddhism teaches uh, four noble truths and an eightfold path. I mean, I'm just giving you a little nutshell. The four noble truths, which is number one, all life is suffering, right? Basically suffering exists. Two, suffering is caused by ignorance and desire or um, uh uh, being attached, being attached to things. We therefore have uh, longing and desire and therefore suffering because we don't always get what we want, right? And so when you reduce ignorance and craving, then you can reduce suffering. So that's the third one. So people who are on the path of Buddhism, they are constantly on this path to reduce suffering, um, to reduce longing, to reduce attachment. Um, and they're very big on, they use words like, um, compassion and grace, right? Like, let us be compassionate towards all sentient beings, right? So they don't just think about humans, but all sentient beings, because we all here are on a path of development and evolving. So those are the four double truths. The fourth is there is a path to enlightenment, right? There is a path out of suffering. So if the first noble truth tells us that all life is suffering, the second one tells us it's because of our attachments, right? Because of our longings, but because of our ignorance. Then the fourth one comes along and says, well, here is the pathway out of that, that you can practice as an everyday spirituality. And it points to the Eightfold Path, which Buddhists practice. The Eightfold Path reads um, kind of like what we would say uh, we might get in our Ten Commandments, which is a way of living your life on a on a regular basis. So things like right livelihood, or um, you know, not telling a lie, and you know, things that are basically meant to help us be good citizens of our world and to be good caretake good caretakers of other creatures as well, right? So it's not just about us. Um, and so Tina Turner practiced this. And if you saw what's love got to do with it, you saw that, or you know anything about Tina Turner's life when she was with Ike, she had to make a run for her life, right? He was abusive. And at a certain point, she decided that she was going to get away from him. And so if you haven't seen the movie, I don't know what's wrong with you. Why have you not seen what's love got to do with it? Angela Bassett gave a tremendous performance. 
as did Lawrence Fishburne uh, playing Ike. But what we saw is a woman who was pretty much in a desperate situation, even though she was famous already and performing all over. You know, you would think, okay, she has everything at her fingertips. How could she be caught in this uh, relationship of abuse? How could this be happening to her? Well, she was. And a lot of people end up, people who are abused end up in scenarios where somebody else will say, well, how come they, they stayed so long? How come they didn't get out? Well, one of the things that helped Tina Turner was practicing Buddhism, right? And so now as she passed recently here, um, you know, people were saying things where she, may she, you know, rest in peace and, you know, maybe may she go on to have her eternity in heaven using very Christian language. And that's, you know, somewhat normal, but in a, in a society that's mostly Christian oriented or people are more familiar with Christianity than anything. We kind of read that on to other people. We make certain assumptions, but the truth is Tina Turner had chosen Buddhism as her path forward to how to live her life, how to be successful, um, how to get away from a, an abusive situation. So, you know, thanks to this medium of YouTube, you can you can search like Tina Turner chant, right? right? Buddhist chant, and you will come up with the chant that she used, which in Buddhism is um, Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. So you could just search for, you know, Tina Turner's Buddhist chant and you will get that and you will be able to hear that, right? And so it's not something where, you know, because a lot of Christians get scared and they're like, oh, you're, are you, you're praying to a false God or you're praying to a demon. And that's a Christian, you know, worldview where everything that's not Christian is scary. And you have to think about why that is. Like, why have, why does Christianity perpetuate this kind of world where you have to be afraid of everything? Does not God give us grace? God does not give us a spirit of fear. And yet Christians will read onto everything else, a spirit of fear. So, you know, if you're thinking, well, I don't know about this chanting thing because am I chanting to demons or whatever? No, it's another religious system, right? Buddhism is a world religion. Of course, it comes out of an Eastern context of India, China, right? All over the world at this point, but it comes out of an Eastern context. And so they don't have the idea that if you believe in someone else, that that is a way to your salvation in the afterlife, right? So what Buddhists are concerned with is alleviating, alleviating suffering and not having to get on this wheel of constant rebirth. They believe in reincarnation, right? So they want to get off this wheel of rebirth where they're constantly having to come back into this human experience with its suffering and attachments, right? So when you're practicing the Four Noble Truths, you're practicing the Eightfold Path, that is to help you to um, alleviate the suffering in this lifetime and to reduce your attachments, aka karma, so that you don't have to repeat, i.e. reincarnate continually. Each time you reincarnate, that is an opportunity for you to either get more attachments or to lessen, right? To reduce your attachments and to pull up, pull back from this illusory world, right? Like this is, you know, a dream, right? Are we in a dream? Is this the real world? Is this the matrix? Are we out of the matrix? Like, how do we wake up from the matrix? So you can kind of think about Buddhism and that kind of concept, like, is this, is this live or is it Mimorex? Is this the matrix or how do I get out of the matrix? And the Buddhists say, well, the matrix or Maya, the illusory nature of all of this that we're experiencing is fraught with suffering because we become attached to things, to people, places, and things. And so there's a way of being, of, of um, exercising compassionate non-attachment, meaning, you know, you don't walk through the world like, I don't care about nothing and nobody, but you understand that all things are impermanent. All things come and go. It's a natural ebb and flow to life. And so if we get attached to exactly the way things are, right, then we suffer because we want or expect 
our relationships should stay the same. Um, you know, we are attached to people when they die. And so we suffer, we grieve. And then of course, there's a certain healthy way to grieve. But, you know, we have to understand that there's a process to life, right? There's a process, there's a time to be born. There's a time to be a child. There's a time to age and there's a time to pass. And if we're not, if we're resistant of the challenge of that as a challenge, then we're going to suffer. So the Buddhists say, well, practice non-attachment in the sense that you understand the flow. You understand that life is a flow, right? And so you're not going to be able to hold it like water, right? You're not going to be able to hold it. And the more you try to hold it, the more you're going to suffer, right? So anyway, it's a little, little tiny bit about Buddhism. Um, and yes, it was started um, by, well, the Buddha, right? Siddhartha Gautama, who was a prince in India, and he had an awakening process, right? He lived a very privileged um, life as a prince, right? Who was basically sheltered by from anything. He was sheltered from um, seeing poverty or sickness or death, but as he grew older, he wanted to see what he was missing. He was like, I understand I'm living in a cocoon or in a bubble here in the palace, right, in India. I'm realizing that I live in a bubble. And so he wanted to get outside of the palace walls and explore. And when he did, he said, how can this be, right? Like, I've never seen this. I've never seen such suffering. How can there be suffering in the world? And so he wanted to get on the other side of it and get some answers. Like, of course we all do. And so that set him as a young man to um, forward on his own spiritual journey towards enlightenment, which means he gave up his royal status. He gave up everything, gave up wife, family, gave up everything and went to explore, went on his own journey. And from that, we get the world religion of Buddhism and we get even some black people practicing Buddhism, Tina Turner, Herbie Hancock, as I said, and I've recently come on, uh, become aware of the teachings of a uh, Buddhist by the name Buddhist teacher by the name of Lama Rod Owens. So maybe some of you have heard of him. You can certainly look up some of his videos on uh, this good YouTube. I will put some links uh, in the box below. But Lama is a title, and his name is Rod Owens, and he is an African American Buddhist young. Uh, I think young-ish uh, Buddhist teacher. So anyway, as I said, I want to come on here and just ex give us this nugget to expand the way we think about African um, American religious practices. Now, obviously, Buddhism is not an American religion. It's not an American spirituality, but it's a, it's a global world religion at this point, and anybody can participate in it. And so let me know if you um, are interested in that kind of thing. Like, you know, what is going on in these other religions? And, you know, how do we as Black people relate to them? And why don't we ever see Black people doing this? Or why, you know, why does it seem so foreign? Right? So, you know, be happy to bring some more videos on that as well. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Did you already know that about Tina Turner? Maybe some of you, um, I just, my Lyft driver the other day, um, I don't know how we got to talking about it in Lyft, but of course, me being me, I'm always talking about spirituality and religion. And she said that she was introduced to uh, chanting. She was a black woman, Lyft driver. And she's like, yeah, I used to chant. I used to go to the Buddhist temple. And I was like, well, okay, girl. Anyway, that's it. Bye for now. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, watch out for more videos. Bye for now.